Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you were talking about how like divorce and like if you have a family and you have like a, a divorce battle, how people like sometimes never come out of that. And I remember you saying that in a class before too. So what do you think about that? It's so like horrible and what allows people to come out of that? Okay. Well, let, let's think about this for a minute. Okay. And then we'll, we'll go back to the symbolic stuff. How many chances do you think you'll have in your life for, for like a serious, high quality, intimate relationship? What do you guys think? How many chances are you going to have for that? Three to four. Three to four. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I would say you probably top out at about five. Okay. Two down, three to go. So. <laughs> okay, so. You know, that's not that many chances. Plus. You get old quick, you know, by the time you're 45, you're not going to have a family. And well, you can do that sometimes if you're male, if you're female, maybe, but it gets pretty rough. And you're looking probably at that point at a fair bit of in vitro and that sort of interaction. It's tough, it's hard on people. So, you know, not only do you not have that many chances, you don't have that much time. So you got to get it right. So if you get it wrong, it costs you. Like maybe it'll cost you five years. Five years is a long time. So, and three five-year costs is like, you've lost things there that you can't replace. Okay, so that's one part of it is, you don't have that many chances, and it's costly to, to burn up the time. Okay, the second thing is, a divorce is very complicated. Like, it's not so bad if you get divorced to someone who's reasonable. But often the reason that you're getting divorced is that one or the other or both of you aren't that reasonable. And what that might mean is that you might be negotiating with someone whose basic goal is to make sure that you don't have another day of success in the next 20 years. And if that's their goal, they will attain it. So, and there's lots of ways people do that and they usually do it by holding their children hostage. And people will definitely do that. They do it all the time. You know, so you want to avoid that. And then, you know, then of course it's hard on the relationship you have with your children. And like that's, those are probably the most relation, important relationships you have in your life. You know, it's like, might be parents, might be siblings, might be your, your partner, might be your kids. But I think when it comes right down to it, your parents are old. And so are you. But your kids aren't. And they're just as close. Plus, they need you. And so you start twisting and messing that about, boy. It's hard on your psyche. It's hard on the kids, too. So, you know. So then I'm just thinking about that and what you said about how that's a cost. If you, if you mess it up, that, and that's like a five-year cost, that's a, that's, it costs you, right? Oh, and it might be a 15-year cost if you're in a custody battle. And it yeah. would cost you a quarter of a million dollars. Right. Or, or let's more. say, yeah, but like, is it then, would you say, like being a psychologist, that it's better for people to like pursue a relationship that's like not good, to like, continue to do that and possibly incur further costs than it is to just cut it off because it wouldn't divorce It's a complicated question. What I would say is, don't make the kind of mistakes that get you into such a stupid relationship to begin with. Okay, because that's the answer to that question. And the way you do that is by trying not to delude yourself any more than is absolutely necessary. And that means when you're in the damn relationship, tell the person the truth and try to figure out what the truth is for you. And don't put up with any nonsense and stand up for yourself. And also aim towards the good. You know, if you do all those things, then your relationship is probably going to work. If you're trying to do all those things, really, and you have a partner that will not do that, then leave. But it's a rare person who won't do that if they're stepped along the way properly and they learn how to do it. Now, not everyone's like that, because you do run into some people who are basically devoted towards mayhem and trouble. You know, but usually, you know, a person is a balance of striving for the good and, you know, messing about in the hell. And, you know, you're both like that when you start a relationship and you try to tilt it towards the good. And then you won't run into that problem. So, but you have to do that right from the beginning of the relationship, you know. It doesn't take that much to corrupt a relationship so that it's not really salvageable. Enough mistakes, three or four acts of infidelity, you're done. 
you're not going to come back from that because the fundamental element of trust has been removed. And then you can't communicate with the person because you don't know if they're telling you the truth. And then you don't know if you're dealing with reality. And if you're not dealing with reality with your partner, it's like, good luck fixing that. It's like you're working on a ghost car while the real one is sitting in the shop with the motor out, you know. It's not going to get you anywhere. So a lot of the issue is don't get in the trouble to begin with. If you are in the trouble, well, then you try to straighten yourself out and see if you can fix it. Well, if you can't, your options aren't great. And it depends on the particularities of the situation. Now, now I have people that I counsel, it's like, leave that person. And the rule is, they're lying to you, they aren't aiming up, and you won't be able to tolerate being with them for 10 years without becoming resentful, alcoholic, and homicidal. So that's a bad outcome, there's nothing you can do to avoid it, so you might as well leave. But you know, you have to have that sorted out, it has to be the truth, because it's no fun, it's no good to leave someone who's struggling in, a, in the lurch, you know, and you think, well I'm with this person, they're not going anywhere, you know, maybe they have an alcohol problem, and they're resentful, it's like, but I'm all they've got. Well, they bloody well better want to have to fix that, because you're not going to be able to fix it. All that'll happen is you'll end up in the same place. Now if they really want to fix it, more than anything, and they're willing to tell the truth about it, and willing to interact with you, then there's a ghost of a chance you might pull through it. But it's very hard to fix someone, and it's really hard to fix someone who does not want to be fixed. And there's lots of people like that.